Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I have filmed, so it feels a little weird being in front of the camera again, but I am back to do the mid-year book freakout tag. So I apologize for being a little absent these past couple weeks. I have been unbelievably busy with work right now and it's been one of those times in work where it just starts to seep into your personal life and you start to stress about it in your personal life a little bit and um, it's been hard to like concentrate on reading and concentrate on like really anything else so get through it but I'm back things are slowing down a little bit where I can come back and hopefully start getting back to reading. But I figured the mid-year book freakout tag was a fantastic video to do to kind of recap my reading this year so far and give you all some, hopefully, good recommendations. I've read a lot of awesome books this year and I might do a whole video on, on just like the best books I've read because I know that that's the first question in this tag and I just have so many to share and it was hard to just narrow it down to one for this video. So let me know if you're interested in just seeing like the best books of the year so far. But without further ado, I'm going to stop talking. Let's get right into the tag. Like I mentioned, the first question, best book you've read this year. I am not going to say my real answer because I'm going to save that for the next question. Um, but I will say like the best standalone book I've read this year, I think has to go to Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I absolutely loved this book. It's almost like if I could pitch it with just like the quick elevator pitch, I would say it is like if you put a Jane Austen character into a military fantasy novel, that's, that's the pitch. And it is so well done. I absolutely loved the main character in this book, Emily. She really does feel like she's taken right out of a Jane Austen novel, complete with like a Jane Austen, like Pride and Prejudice-esque type romance that is present in this book. It's fantastic seeing that contrast of this character who has to go to war after being drafted into the military and is like boots on the ground and you're following her as a soldier fighting in this war and she doesn't know like what they're really fighting for. It, it explores really cool themes around war where it's like, do you know whether or not you're really fighting for the right thing? It asks questions like, is, is the side you're fighting for being completely truthful with you in their mission? And it's just so fascinating. I loved this. I thought that the character work was amazing. I thought that the character arcs and how everything wrapped up at the end was fantastic. This is a perfect standalone fantasy book in my opinion and definitely makes my top favorite fantasy books of all time list. The next question is best sequel you've read this year and if you've been following my channel at all this year I think you can guess what sequel I will say and I'm just gonna go ahead and lump in a whole bunch of sequels into this answer because it's the entire Legends of the First Empire series by Michael J. Sullivan. Are we surprised? Absolutely not. This whole series is my favorite fantasy series of all time now. I read these books um, pretty much like almost back to back with like a couple books in between each one, but I read them like pretty close together and it was the best experience. I always wanted to be back in this world every time I was away from it. I love the world itself that Michael J. Sullivan has created. I think that the entire series and the way it ended was just so well done. It totally stuck the landing. Every sequel for me is a part of this answer. Uh, if I had to choose my favorite in the series, I would have to say Age of War. That one, oh, that one made me so emotional at the end. Oh my goodness. And the way Michael J. Sullivan wrote the series, it was originally supposed to be a trilogy. So the first three books in this six book series actually kind of have their own arc to them so that you can read the first three kind of on their own and have like a complete story from it. But Michael J. Sullivan realized there was still a lot of story left to tell. So he decided to make it a six book series where the last three books in the series almost have their own arc to them. So it was a really interesting reading experience getting to read all of them back to back. I loved it. I, every character, truly. I think that's what makes the series stand out so much for me and what makes it my favorite series of all time is because usually with a fantasy series or any series in general, I'll have like one or two characters that are like absolute favorites. But this series, it was like every single 
character in the cast was a favorite. And I think that's what makes it so special. So if you didn't already catch on, I obviously really recommend this series. Please go read it. Uh, I hope it works as well for you as it did for me. It is definitely uh, my favorite. And I think I've said all I need to say about <laughs> that series because I've already talked about it so many times on this channel. A new release that I haven't read yet, but I would like to. So there are so many <laughs> that fall in this. I'm actually in the middle of reading Lachlan's right now by Robert Jackson Bennett, which obviously this was my most anticipated book of the whole year, because if you didn't know, the Founders Trilogy is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time as well. When I got my hands on the third book, I was so excited to just jump right in, and I pretty much did jump right in, and then unfortunately that is the moment where work started getting really stressful and I just got into a headspace where I, I couldn't continue with the book. I was losing focus, I was thinking about work outside of work, and that's like the worst. And with that book, I wanted to be in the perfect mood for it. I don't want to be focused on anything else. I want to be like fully absorbed. So I like had to put that one on hold a little bit because it's just been so crazy, but I think I'm ready to pick it back up pretty soon, hopefully. Um, and that one is definitely, I think, the one that I absolutely need to finish. All right, the next question was the most anticipated release I have for the rest of the year. And I would have to say Babel by R.F. Kuang. R.F. Kuang, author of the Poppy War series. I love the Poppy War. I love the Dragon Republic. I will read anything R.F. Kuang writes. I know that this one takes place in Oxford. It's more of a dark academia. I think there's a lot of themes on academia in this one. This is not like something I typically pick up. Um, I really, have I read a dark academia novel? I think I have, but that's not something I like usually gravitate towards, but I'm just so in awe of R.F. Kuang's writing that I'm just excited to check it out. And I've been hearing amazing early reviews for it. Um, I've already seen some people who have their hands on it um, gushing about it. So very excited to check this one out. The next question is a biggest disappointment of the year. And unfortunately, this, ah, uh, this isn't necessarily my least favorite book that I've read this year, but it's the biggest disappointment because I thought it was going to be a five-star book easily. Let me go ahead and say it. It's Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. The reason I say this one is because Black Sun was one of my favorite, favorite books. Uh, I, that made my like top favorite fantasy books list of last year. I loved Black Sun. And unfortunately, Fevered Star, it felt so much like a middle book. And the characters that we grew to love and were following so much in the first book took much more of a backseat in the second book and that was such a bummer because we spent a lot more time with characters I do not care about at all rather than the characters I grew to love so so much in the first book and it felt like the main characters from the first book just didn't have a lot to do there was one perspective in particular that I just felt like had really not much to do there wasn't much point to like the perspective so it's a big bummer still overall enjoyed it i gave it three and a half stars i love this world so so much and i still do love those characters that are from the first book like <gasps> amazing amazing characters but unfortunately this one just the plot itself and where our characters were and who we were following it wasn't my favorite so that's got to be my biggest disappointment the next one is the biggest surprise of the year. And for me, I'm gonna say Runaway by Harlan Coben because this is one that I totally picked up on a whim. I had never read any Harlan Coben. All I really knew was that he was a very prolific mystery thriller writer. He's written a ton of books. Uh, he's one of those authors that you go to any airport and you're always gonna see some of his books on the shelves. So I, I didn't know what to expect going into Runaway. Um, the pitch of it definitely intrigued me. I love themes of parenthood in books and this one follows a father who is looking for his missing daughter and his daughter is a runaway who unfortunately got involved with drugs so she's a drug addict and she gets caught up into this bigger conspiracy and her father and mother kind of go looking for her and it's this mystery novel that it, there's just like this whole conspiracy like bigger plot going on and I was so surprised by how engrossed I was in the story. Like I, this is one that when I picked it up, I could not put it down. I think I finished it in two days because I just couldn't put it down. I had to keep reading it. I had to know 
what was gonna happen to these characters. I like quickly became very, very invested in these characters. I felt like the emotional beats really hit hard, like the, the themes of the parenthood and like the family relationships and like what was happening. It was just so intense and, and I was, so engaged. I was so hooked the whole time. And I thought that the ending, just like the way everything played out was so satisfying. So I really, really enjoyed this one. Like this is like a five star, totally unexpected five star for me. And it makes me very interested to check out some more Harlan Coben. So I guess there's a reason he has so many books that are so popular because uh, I really, really like his writing style. The next question is a favorite new to me author. So this could be a debut or a new to me author. and. Oh, Michael J. Sullivan, obviously, uh, has to go in this category. Uh, this was the first year I read Thryaria Revelations and Legends of the First Empire, and yeah, I enjoyed all of them. Like, I don't think I have to go into any more detail. The way he writes his women characters, I love the way he writes uh, battle scenes and the way he writes his emotional beats and just, oh, it. it it's an emotional gut punch, uh, every book, but I, I love it. I love it so much. Next question is your new fictional crush. And I'm gonna tweak this just a little bit to be just my new favorite romance. And that has to go to The Love Hypothesis uh, by Allie Hazelwood. This one I think totally deserves the hype. I was hooked. I loved this. I thought it was so adorable. I loved the main character and I loved the main uh, male character in this one, Adam. Um, so I just thought it was adorable. I thought it was totally worth the hype. I was smiling like the whole time I was reading it. Um, so I know it doesn't work for some people, but it totally worked for me. I thought it was adorable. And it's one of those where I really like the characters like on their own, independent of each other, but I like them even more together. So that's always kind of something I look for in my romance. Do I feel like these characters are bringing out the best in each other? And in this one I did, uh, so I really, I really loved it. Next question is my new favorite character and <laughs> um, I, can I say the whole cast of Legends of the First Empire? <laughs> Truly, I mean, Persephone, Bryn, Moya, Roan, Gifford, um, Kali, all of them. Suri, Suri, geez, Suri. Uh, yeah, I love all of them. Like, <laughs> that's my answer. It's, I, I hate to keep like repeating myself, but I feel like I have to, I have to answer honestly. And that, that is my honest answer. I also love em Emily from Guns of the Dawn, like I already mentioned. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else I can bring up that's like a new character. No, yeah, those, those are them. <laughs> All right, the book that made me cry, I am going to give this one to The Maid by Nita Prose. So The Maid is a very cozy mystery novel. I think you have to go in with the expectation that it is much more about the main character of Molly the Maid rather than being about the like murder mystery that's happening in the story. I loved this book because I was concentrating much more on Molly the Maid's story and I didn't really care about the murder mystery plot. Like it was what it was. And honestly, it could have gone any way that it wanted to. And I still would have loved this book because I just love the main character so much. Uh, I will say that this one, the reason it made me cry was it got really emotional at the end because Molly has this amazing, amazing bond with her grandmother who raised her. And you just get to explore that a lot. And I that was like one of my favorite parts of the book was her uh, relationship with her grandmother mother and getting to explore that it was just so emotional so that one is definitely the the book that made me cry I think the most um, but I will also say uh, there were three books in Legends of the First Empire that made me cry and it was Age of Swords, Age of War, and Age of Empire. Um, so the second, the third, and the sixth book and if you know you know. Oh my god those books oh all right a book that made me happy i'm gonna say amari and the night brothers by bb alston this is a middle grade fantasy book about amari whose brother very early on in the book goes missing and she on her quest to find him gets wrapped up in this like portal fantasy world that is full of like these supernatural creatures and she finds out things about herself that she didn't realize and it's just such a fun story. I loved this one. Uh, it was like a perfect middle grade fantasy in my opinion because it had just the right amount of like fun whimsy world building and just like 
fun things that were going on, a great focus on friendships, and I loved all of that. And then it also had some really important themes that it was tackling, and I just thought it did such a good job of balancing those things. And I just love Amari as a main character. I thought she was so brave and like persistent, and I just loved it. Um, so this was definitely one that made me very, very happy throughout. The next question is, what was your favorite video that you filmed this year? I am gonna say my booktube friend challenge video. So I asked some of my close booktube friends what is one book that they would recommend to me out of any other book that they've read that they think I would love the most. And basically I put them all head to head and I read each book that they recommended. And not only did I read some of my favorite books of the year in that video, but it was also just so much fun getting to like involve them in this like fun competition video. So I thought that that one was a blast. I would love to do it again. It just took so so much time uh, so we'll have to see if you know eventually I have some more time to to try and do something like that again the next question is what is the most beautiful book that you've bought this year I'm gonna say this whole uh, set of the diviners books by Libba Bray from fairy loot I just really love this style of cover especially because the series itself um, doesn't really have like a matching set that you can buy uh, so the fact that fairy loot came out with a matching set was so exciting to me so I haven't read these yet I definitely need to but I'm very glad that I got them because they're beautiful. And then finally, what are some books that I still need to read this year? So I think this would include obviously finishing up Lachlan's. This would also include finishing out the Ryria Revelation series with the Heir of Novron bind up that I have. So that one. And then finishing out the Burnt Empire Saga with the Blind King's Wrath. I started the Blood Air trilogy, so would love to finish out that trilogy um, by Amelia Wenzel. I'm sure there are more. I'm not thinking of. Oh, and then when the Amari sequel comes out, definitely reading that one. So those are the things that I think I'm prioritizing the most, but basically I just want to get through as many books on my physical TBR as I possibly can. And if you don't know what books are on that TBR, I will link the video down below where I call myself out and count every book on my physical TBR. That wraps this up for the mid-year book freakout tag. If you see any books that I mentioned that you have any thoughts on, leave those comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Oh.